What's up, guys? My name is Miles. And my name is Fez. And this is The Commodity. And today we are reacting to why Indonesia has the best and worst geography in the world. There's always negatives when there's a bunch of positives. Yes. It's just simple as that. I would already guess that it's the best geography just because they have so much ocean. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, could... my assumption is it's because it's beautiful mm -hmm. and you got tons of water. And you got tons of beach because literally it's an archipelago, which means that it's a bunch of islands that create yeah. their their country. And then I think the negative, because we we know a little bit about Indonesia from our past videos, so I'm thinking it's because of what we've seen in other videos where there's a lot of uh, volcanoes. And seismic activity. Seis yep. Yeah. So those are the negatives which it seems like that's not a constant so the positive would outweigh, outweigh the negatives by a lot yeah for sure let's hop in and check it out yeah let's do it located in southeast asia the fourth most populous country in the world indonesia stretches across a massive expanse of well over 5,000 kilometers from the Andaman Sea to the Torres Strait, a domain wider than both the continental United States and the continent of Europe. However, wow. while most countries are fairly cont You know, I would say if, if I was to ask someone, like, what do you think the most populated countries are in the world? Nobody will bring up Indonesia. And that's crazy. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have before, like, learning about Indonesia. Yeah, I would have been like, oh, it's just a small Asian country. Yeah, you, you don't, like, you don't think about it. But and to be honest with you, I wouldn't even bring it up, to be perfectly honest. If I'm not going to lie to you, I'm like... After, it's, it's because there's not, like, a lot of talk about it. At yeah. At least in Dallas or any area that I've been in. Yeah, in the U.S. Um, in general. I don't think there's a lot of conversation behind it because I don't think it's actually part of a large trade route, mm -hmm. which a lot of, you know, stuff like that's one of the reasons that Singapore has been so successful It's because it's part of such a large trade route. Right. And I've heard about Singapore, yeah. not necessarily as like a, you know, a formidable force, uh, formidable, whatever word I'm looking for, force to be reckoned with because that's how you hear about China, Russia, the United States, uh, unfortunately North Korea. But uh, you hear about these countries because they've got lots of money or going into their military and they're, you, you gotta kinda worry about some of these countries and you don't worry about other countries. But you don't hear about Indonesia, even though they're the, what, the fourth yeah. most populated country? And what's crazy is like all of the ocean in the middle is theirs. Like it's their territory. And it's insane that it spans over such a large area countries. Yeah. And, and What's continents. really cool is I think it's the best part of it is that it is like this. It is an archipelago mm -hmm. because for the people that live there, because I never think about the U S as a military or as a government. I think of the U S as my home and a place where all my friends live. Right. And then I think of Indonesia as a place that I want to visit for fun. And mm. then I look at Malaysia as a place that I want to visit for fun. I look and, at them now as they're my only friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sad. But uh, so I see this as like, this is better because they have all these beaches. Yeah. And they have a lot of water. So that means a lot of seafood. <laughs> I love seafood and beaches. Land transport, Indonesia is divided amongst thousands of different islands presenting a unique challenge to the archipelago nation. So maybe it didn't Indonesia's <laughs> geography is in many ways blessed and cursed at the same time. So how does Indonesia keep itself together with the geographic challenges that it faces? Hmm. The Republic of Indonesia is located on what can be known neutrally as the Nusantara Archipelago, bordered by Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, and East Timor, and not comparatively far from Singapore, the Philippines, and Australia. Indonesia. So I didn't know they shared this island, or I guess that would be an Who, island. What, what country is this? Uh, Literally, as the Nusantara Archipelago, bordered by Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, and East Timor, Papua New Guinea. and not comparatively far from Singapore. Wow, hold on, pause it. Are these the same? Is this Papua New Guinea as well? 
No, I don't think it is. Never mind. Mm-mm. I think this was TM War or whatever they yeah. said. I've never even heard of it. Mm-mm. There's so many countries that I've never heard of. Yeah. Australia. Indonesia's 270 million people live on 6,000 of its islands, which in total can number anywhere from the Indonesian government's National Mapping Agency's estimate of 13,466 to their space agency Lapan's count of 18,307. This discrepancy is thought to be due to either counting reefs that appear above the waterline at low tide or peninsulas that only become islands during high tide. The hmm. main islands of Indonesia are Java, That's Sumatra, Borneo, shared with Malaysia and Brunei. I never thought about that. Like some of them are like right at sea level. Right. And whenever sea level rises, those islands are gone yeah. for a day. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sulawesi and New Guinea, shared with Papua New Guinea. In addition to two islands, but groups, nighttime, the Maluku Islands yeah. and Nusa Tenggara. Indonesia's capital and largest city, Jakarta, lies on the northwestern portion of the island of Java. With a population of I around 150 million, 31 million of whom living in the Jakarta metro area, Java is the most populated island in the world and home to more than half the population of Indonesia and 13 of its 20 largest cities. As such, Java is effectively the core of the Indonesian Republic. Due to the mountainous terrain in the south of the island, most of its population lives on the northern coast on the Java Sea, toward much of the rest of the country. To the west lies the far larger but less populous island of Sumatra, with 26% of Indonesia's population and four of its 20 biggest cities. Sumatra is actually comparable in size and population to Spain. In the north, wow. with okay, okay, so, and that's just on that part. Yeah, and Spain's a pretty, decent, yeah, yeah, decent sized country. Malaysia and Brunei is Borneo, of which Indonesia's portion is known as Kalimantan deriving from the Sanskrit Kalimantana, meaning burning weather island. Borneo is where we're traveling. Yeah. That's Sabah, KK. Yeah. Which like, I suppose yeah. is just a yeah. badass way of saying the weather's especially hot in Malaysia humor. side. To yeah. the east of Borneo is Sulawesi, with 19 million people, 1.3 million of whom live in the capital Makassar, whose name was honestly just too cool sounding for me not to want to say out loud. <coughs> At the furthest east is New Guinea, shared of course with Papua New Guinea. The provinces of Papua and West Papua together only have a population of 4 million, most of whom hmm. being indigenous Papua peoples, consisting of 312 different tribes, portion. and with 65% of the population identifying with Protestantism, rather than the more heavily Islamic core of the country. This region is also one with a large separatist movement due to an ongoing series of human rights violations and environmental issues, with the region providing a major role. You know what I did not know? Hmm. Is they hide a cross behind that island. What do you mean? Yeah, a cross just popped out. Oh. You didn't know that? Like it pops out from the ocean? Yeah, I mean, it's just hidden under the island. <laughs> Role in the mining industry. As one could imagine, <laughs> one of the island biggest just floating on the water <laughs> yeah, is just across all these it. islands together. Transport on the islands is, of course, dominated by highways and five unconnected railway systems on Java and Sumatra. Interestingly, while Indonesia is a left side driving country, Indonesian trains drive on the right side of the tracks due to Dutch colonial influence. Indonesia has 283,000 kilometers of paved and 213,000 kilometers of unpaved highways. However, due to the high cost of building and maintaining the national highway system, much of the construction of new expressways has been outsourced to private companies. That's like Dallas. Like the the uh, traffic, mm -hmm. but there's always construction yeah. in Dallas. So it's not like this just because there's so many people. It also is like this because there's so much construction going on. Yeah, um, well, and it's, and it's a lot of people. We have, yeah. I mean, the thing is, we have major highways that run east to west all the way across the country, and we have highways that run north to south all the way across the country. Yeah. So we're a huge transit area uh, where if you're trying to take something from California to Florida. Well, it's like if I want to go to Mississippi, I hop on I-20 and, and stay on I-20 until I get to I-10. Yeah. Yeah. To Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, we have Meaning tons of highways. expressways in the country are toll roads. The majority of the country's railways are located toll roads. on Java. With We're used to that, too. services alongside commuter rail services in and around Jakarta and Surabaya. 
On Sumatra exist four separate railways in the provinces of Aceh, North Sumatra, West Sumatra, and South Sumatra and Lampung. Although a connection between the Aceh and North Sumatra railways is being built, no railways exist elsewhere in the country, though new railways are either planned or under construction in Sulawesi, Kalimantan, and West Papua. For both passenger and cargo service between islands, sea travel plays an especially important I love water. role yeah, in Indonesian transport. Connections across narrow straits, such as the Sunda Strait between Java and Sumatra, or the Bali Strait between Java and Bali, and Strait. also into other countries like Malaysia and Singapore, That'd be a good rock band name. What? Th the Thunder Straits. The Thunder Straits. We're the Thunder Straits. <laughs> yeah! yeah. They're operated by frequent ferry services, often running 24 hours a day due to the high traffic. Wow. Between both the major islands and the more remote islands, especially in eastern Indonesia, run a network of longer distance passenger ferries, most notably under the national carrier Pelni. Pelni runs a fleet of 25 passenger ships, in addition to cargo ships, on I've never been on a big boat like cities. that. Each of I ships have, is a and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I've been well. I went on a cruise to the Bahamas, and the boat that I was on was actually the largest boat in the entire world. Um, I think like eight years earlier, mm -hmm. and I looked up the same boat. Now it's not even part of the same cruise line. It's in Europe somewhere now. Really doing cruises, but it now like in, it's funny like. This was probably like nine years ago, and then now there's like been five or six boats that are now bigger than it. Yeah. So it's really funny, but yeah, it, it's awesome. It's the most amazing thing, and it's funny because a lot of people get seasick. I think I'm just meant for the water. Like I was, I didn't get any nausea, nausea or anything, and I was just having a blast. Yeah. I loved it. I want to go on a cruise. Anywhere from All you can eat to food. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Depending on the vessel, and provide three meals per day and feature a cafeteria, shop, clinic, and a musala or prayer niche, as mm. well as other such amenities. These ferries can take days or weeks to travel the whole line, but provide an inexpensive way to get to particularly remote islands, as well as transporting cargo between said islands. In fact, in many parts of Borneo, inland waterways also provide a more effective mode of transport to inland communities, which may not have effective road links to the outside world. Air travel, however, is he could have aside at least from 2020, the up. <laughs> a rapidly growing <laughs> sector in Indonesia's domestic transport market, growing from transporting 27.4 million passengers in 2009 to 94.5 million in 2014, wow. Wow. due in part That's to the rapid jump. growth of yeah. Indonesia's middle class. The aviation industry, however, has been largely stifled by poor infrastructure and haze resulting from plantation fires due to illegal land clearing practices. Mm -hmm. These issues yep. have resulted in costly flight delays, and accidents and overwhelmed infrastructure have made Indonesia's aviation what many say to be among the least safe in the world. Even wow. so, Indonesia is projected I wonder if that's still like the case. This is 2014, so I wonder if that's still the case now. Yeah, I mean, which this is a newer video. Yeah. But yeah. No, I mean, the only, I've never heard that. Yeah, and that's nerve wracking a little bit, if I'm not going to lie. And <laughs> I hate to admit it um, because of the Malaysian uh, airplane that wrecked. Mm -hmm. That still kind of puts some like unease. I, I'm sure they've gotten better since. Right. But it still puts a little bit of unease in, in me because I still have a little bit of. I mean, I deal with anxiety for sure. And I mean, I don't think if we were to fly into Malaysia, we're not going to take Air Malaysia. I would. No, well, I'm saying I don't think that's what we would actually take. I don't think that's the airline that oh. takes us. Um, I think that's mostly like the airlines that go out of Malaysia versus in. I don't know. I've never traveled there. If I'm so. not mistaken, no, I think the uh, flight that I was looking at uh, is a one stop. Or mm -hmm. you stop and then you hop on Air Malaysia. And then, really? Yeah. yeah. See, and... It, it, and I, I don't want to sit here and act like I'm trashing it or anything. And please don't think I am. I just, it just triggers a little bit of anxiety with, in me. And to be fair, American Airlines, I think Southwest is the only one that hasn't had a crash. Yeah. I mean, if I go and down that, on an airplane, it was my first airplane ride. And, you know, it was I horrible. Was, it was <laughs> never riding on a plane again. Literally. It was meant for me to die, you know, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. I just shouldn't have got on the plane. Become the world's sixth busiest aviation market by Final 2034. Destination type and Jakarta-Sukarno-Hatta yeah. Airport has already passed Singapore Changi, Bangkok's Wanapum, 
and oh, wow. Kuala Lumpur International to become the busiest airport in Southeast Asia. Air travel, however, so is far Kuala from Lumpur's. the only major sector well, wait, of Wait, hold on. Indonesia. Go back. I want to see what the most busy one is. Go back one more. And Jakarta, Sukarno. Beijing. Really? Dubai, Tokyo, Hong Kong. Oh, this is in Asia. I was wanting to know, like, the entire world. Oh. Because I still think the busiest airport, and I could be wrong, but I still think it's the one that's in Atlanta. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I'm surprised to see that Jakarta's Singapore, over Chunky, Bangkok's Singapore, Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. Lumpur International. Well, Jakarta's a bigger the busiest airport city. In city. Got it's a people, much yeah. bigger country. Air travel, yeah. however, is far from the only major sector of Indonesia's economy, as the Indonesian economy also revolves around agriculture and mining, as well as the service hmm. industry. Indonesia is classified as an upper middle income or newly industrialized country, alongside countries. So it's big on uh, what was the third one that they said? Um, service, I think. Mm -hmm. um, do y'all tip your waiters and waitresses and all that kind of stuff? Like what we do, everybody, every video I've ever seen that talks about the U.S. Like things to be prepared for when you travel is you tip here. Like you tip almost everybody. It seems like yeah. Uh, like if you're out eating and someone serves you food, it doesn't matter if they didn't really do much. As long as they do it well. Yeah. It's like I, I do affect my tip based on the yeah. quality and of the service. The average is like 20%. You, no, it's like 15 is the average. Oh, well, if you pay, so 15% of your bill that you paid for your food. So if you have a $100 you add, bill. You'd add $15 yeah. on the tip. Yeah. And so if you're rich and you got them $1,000 bills, you, you, it's you more than that. Big tip. Yeah. It's like China, Turkey, Brazil, or Mexico meaning it isn't exactly one of the richest countries in the world, but it's still far from one of the poorest. Geologically, the country lies directly on the convergence between the Sunda and Australian plates, and isn't far from the Indian, Philippine, and Pacific plates either, making the region extremely tectonically active. This also means Indonesia is one of the most volcanic countries in the world, proving an obvious That's curse, crazy. but in some ways also a blessing in disguise as it gives the country incredibly fertile soil for agriculture, mm -hmm. though yeah. agricultural conditions can still be quite unpredictable. Jakarta, however, poses the country with a massive problem, as the city is shrinking at a rate of 10 centimeters per year, Sinking. with parts of North Jakarta having sunk more than 2.5 meters in the last decade, putting Jakarta as wow. the fastest sinking city in the world. The Indonesian government- That's really scary. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you going? Well, it's kind of like California. Yeah. Except for I think California is falling into the ocean. But yeah, <laughs> like they're falling off. This yeah. is just sinking, like getting lower and lower to sea level. Is, is it because, did he, I, sometimes I blank out a little bit. Is it because of the sea levels rising? Did he say anything like that? No. Because I'm the city pretty sinking. sure I was listening, but. The fastest sinking. Yeah. Because I would assume it's because, you know, the polar caps are melting and the sea levels are actually rising, so. That, yeah, that would make sense as well. Yeah. But why wouldn't the surrounding cities be sinking then? That's a good point. I think that the city's just sinking. sinking. <laughs> Has undertaken a 200 million US dollar plan to build a seawall to protect the city from rising sea levels due to climate change. However, the water level isn't just rising, Sorry. the city itself is sinking. Due to a combination so of new both. developments on top, and the draining of underground aquifers below for drinking water. Partially oh. in response to concerns over the So aquifers, it's funny because so in Dallas, we actually had to build all. So crazy story in Texas, all of our lakes are man-made besides one. And it touches the uh, Louisiana border. Mm -hmm. So it's not even all of ours. Yeah. Um, but in like the Texas or the Dallas area, all of them are built for our, our water source. So it picks up rainwater and then it goes through a filtration system. Now down in San Antonio, they have an aquifer. Uh, it's called Edwards Aquifer. I think it's actually the largest aquifer in the United States, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. And it's really cool. You can go and actually visit parts of it because uh, what it does, what an aquifer does for people that don't know, it's really cool. So when the rainwater hits, it's a natural uh, filtration. filtration system. Mm -hmm. It's got different types of rocks and stuff like that. And it pours through so... Uh, there are limitations and it, uh, the aquifer in Texas is gigantic. It's like, uh, goes from Austin all the way down to South San Antonio. Oh, wow. So it's huge. Yeah. Um, 
And I mean, if you're driving 80 miles an hour, it still takes you two hours to cover maybe more than that to cover that distance. And, uh, it's funny because half of it hasn't even been ventured because it's so big. Yeah. And I mean, you can literally go swim into it and stuff like that, but it limits what you can actually put on your lawn. Even the golf areas, you have to limit what you're putting on your, like your the type of uh, fertilizers and pesticides. And pesticides. Fertilizers, yeah, yeah. Because if it get, seeps gets into in, the ground yep. and then you're drinking it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. some of the best water straight from the tap, it's, it's amazing because it's naturally mineralized. Yeah. So the future of Jakarta, as well as calls from those living outside Java, President Joko Widodo announced plans to move the Indonesian capital to the province of East Kalimantan on Borneo. This new Moving planned capital, capital city will take the name Nagara Rimba Nusa, we did that. meaning forest yeah. archipelago. However, the They're project has been met with environmental concerns, Borneo, yeah. namely with concerns over local it's rainforests, weird. which are a natural habitat for the critically endangered Bornean orangutan. It is, however, thought that moving the capital will also attract many away from Jakarta, in hopes that this will at the very least reduce the strain on Jakarta's roads and drinking water supply. Indonesia ended up with the borders it has today largely through being colonized by the Dutch. Both the spices native to the islands, as well as Indonesia's hold on important choke points for global trade, ultimately attracted interest from European power. You know, I guess if the the capital moves, it'll probably be disappointing for the people in Jakarta. But at the same time, too, it's it's like it's a blessing, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can. It's, it's in the end, it's kind of saving them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could, I could. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, if, if you're I sinking, moved, if I moved to Jakarta because it was the capital, though, I would be kind of disappointed if they moved the capital. I mean, if if you're living there for the capital, I would assume that you're in government. Mm -hmm. Then you would be used to doing what you're expected to do. So right. moving, you're planning on moving to anywhere. the Borneo Island. Um, but yeah, no. Weird fact. Did you know that they're trying to make uh, Washington, D.C. the 51st state? Mm -mm. Yeah. It's, it's right now. It's a it's just a territory. It's not considered a state, but it, it's kind of cool. Like yeah. in my lifetime, there's not been a new state, yeah. you know, and they've, tr uh, you know, they've tried other uh, American territories trying to get it to become a state, but there's been multiple attempts for Texas to become its own country. <laughs> yes. But that's against both. Uh, see, growing up, I was always told that Texas could secede mm -hmm. from the union, but after going back to college and learning in every state's uh, constitution, and of course the federal constitution, it is required to say that it cannot actually secede. I was like, well, then why has everybody told me that we could secede? It's mm -hmm. not true. What it says is it can be divided, mm -hmm. which California has recently tried to do that several, several times because the majority of the state major cities are Democratic or Democrats, and then a good portion of it that's in the middle which is mostly uh, farming areas are Republican. Mm -hmm. So they're like, we don't have enough say in our own area. We just have to follow what the major cities are. Yeah. Where Texas, same concept. It's big enough to where it could be divided into multiple states. Yeah. However, it cannot by law, by the Constitution of Texas, by the Constitution of the United States, it cannot be uh, seceded. I, I learned that in college. It's odd that they keep trying this. <laughs> resulting in the Dutch taking over the area within these specific borders. What was previously a series of different kingdoms, sultanates, and empires was merged into what today is just one republic. A powerful republic which must nonetheless manage the interests of its several thousand islands and the 270 million living in the country as a whole. So I'm, I've always been kind of curious. I, I know that they used to all be this together and stuff, but it seems like it would make sense to me that that Indonesia, Malaysia kind of just become a country together again. Uh, because of be really beneficial country. for both of them. No, yeah. it'd be really <laughs> difficult. It'd be really hard. Don't get me wrong. Um, I guess you could make the same argument with Canada and the United States. Yeah. However, I don't know if there's enough benefit for the U.S. and Canada, or for the U.S. for Canada to be part of it. 
and then I think that the the politics are very different. So that would be another conflict of interest. Yeah. Kind of just like us, we're a uh, we have a president, they have a uh, parliament, we have you know the I don't know what the term is, <laughs> just different um, types of politics, um, yeah. and that would be an issue too. So I'm sure there's a lot of issues for it to not happen, so. Right, uh, guys, before we hop off, I do want to go ahead and shout out a couple of our new members that we have. We got Adam ASMR, thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. Uh, also, Benedict Denisius, Denisius. I'm pretty sure we have given you a shout out, but here's your second shout out, just in yes, case. Yes, we couldn't find your first shout out, but I, I'm not sure if we did. So, thank you guys for joining. If you would like to join our YouTube membership, there's a join button down below. We'd love to have you guys. You get early releases on videos like this, as well as behind the scenes content uh, and vlogs and things like that. So again, we'd love to have you. Also down in the description below, there is a link to our Discord. If you guys would like to join our Discord, we'd love to have you in there, talk, chat, suggest videos like this as well. And lastly, if you guys like this video, Give us a thumbs up. Click and that subscribe button. Smash that subscribe button. Punch that subscribe. Don't punch it. You might crack your phone. Or yeah. your screen or whatever you're yeah. watching on. So with that being said. My name is Miles. And my name is Fez. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Out.